What's up everyone, it's Dakota and welcome back to another modern video and today we continue our journey through the recent past modern pro tours of, you know, the common times I guess and uh, today and more than likely tomorrow we're going to go over the mythic championships that included the modern format in them and kind of some of the storylines and uh, decks that we had kind of seen from that time and just obviously kind of how the tournament ended up shaking out. Of course, if you enjoy videos like this or, or like other content based around modern and pioneer, I do a lot of that stuff. I would appreciate it if you subscribed and uh, ring the notification bell so you know when those videos get posted. If you go down in the description of this video, I will have uh, a link to this page on uh, Goldfish so you can check out some of the deck lists yourself. If that is something that interests you, some of the most played cards, etc. As I kind of find out, like the metagame summary isn't necessarily accurate, so uh, I'll just be kind of going over kind of what we see. But if any of that stuff interests you, of course, uh, I have my Twitch channel linked and Discord server as well. Go ahead and follow those links to support my content and all that great stuff. So, Mythic Championship to London. So this is the second Mythic Championship. You know, we just came out from, you know, the last standard Pro Tour or Mythic Championship where we saw a, a pretty diverse metagame, I believe, in the standard portion. And uh, Modern was definitely no exception to diversity. Around this time, we had decks like Is It Phoenix showed up, uh, making top eight by uh, Javier Dominguez who ended up being an eventual world champion. Uh, you've had a few notable players uh, playing humans. You have Eli Loveman, who won the event and kind of became a household name during this time, and then ended up being in the, I believe, like Challengers League, or in the uh, one of the two versions of like the Pro League for uh, Magic at that time, so that was pretty cool. Brian Bronduin, a former world champion, also on humans, and uh, Chris Kvartek, who ended up being uh, kind of a big name going forward uh, after this event. Um, so, I mean, like, humans at this time was probably one of the most consistent and dominant decks. Grace of Shadow was still kind of, like, kicking around and was still very popular, having all these variants, and humans just kind of smashed just about every version that you could possibly play of Death Shadow. Just because it wanted to be at a low life total, this was a notably aggressive deck that could just handle your big threats and then make a big threat of its own that was very hard for you to deal with because it just seemed like they the the beats just kind of kept coming from like the human deck and it just had in general pretty good matchups against like every just about everything that you could play in the format uh continuing like through the top eight even you had like affinity piloted by matt sperling which one of the famous things that happened in this pro tour and i believe it's this one in particular because uh, I remember the fact that Matt Sperling got to the finals. Uh, technically shouldn't have happened. We should have had a third Tron deck in the top eight. But uh, fa uh, famous player Yuyo Watanabe ended up getting uh, disqualified for marked cards from this event. And then eventually banned for, I believe, two to three years. I want to say it was like two years, but I'm also thinking it was like two and a half. Something like that. Uh, from this event, uh, Matt Sperling was ninth. So he ended up getting bumped into the top eight, to which he rode that all the way to the finals. Uh, having to face humans but ultimately coming up short nonetheless still a very good showing there from a pretty classic archetype that has been a part of the format for a long time and has now seen changes due to various bannings but you know still really cool that even in this time in like uh, early to mid 2019 uh, it's still put up a very very good result even if there really wasn't like anybody else like playing like, if you like go through this I mean you don't really see uh, like technically the closest uh, affinity deck, uh, I I would kind of count Hardened Scales at this time because Hardened Scales was playing a lot of the same things that the uh, that the affinity deck wanted to play. So uh, and that uh, we have like this oddball Titan shift as well, which would just focus on getting a Titan into play, getting a ton of mountains and Valakut killing your opponent. This was before we had Dry to the Elysian Grove. Uh, I believe people even played like Prismatic Omen at one point, which was essentially like uh, the elemental or whatever uh, from, you know, Theros Beyond Death that uh, essentially made all of your lands, every land type uh, in, in addition to its type. So, you know, that that's our top eight. Uh, some other honorable mentions, you know, like all these Is It Phoenix players that went eight and two uh, in the, in the uh, 
Swiss portion of the event. We have some ad nauseum players kind of running around here. Mono Red Eldrazi, which ended up being like pretty good just because you could take your like your humans opponents like big things and your things on rate were a little bit better and like you kind of didn't care about your things getting bounced because you could just kind of play a lot of like some of your other stuff. So uh, pretty cool. Blue White Control was pretty popular. Uh, I believe Just Guy Control was kind of like the thing, and then people just kind of switched to Blue White. Uh, we have Jund, you know, just Jund has always seemed to have been around. You have Amulet Titan, which always seems like the, you know, the, the bridesmaid, never the bride analogy, where it's always kind of like in there. It's in, in like the top. It's always fighting for a spot. And I mean, doing very well at eight and two, uh, even, even at just one copy. But uh, I think still very a uh, very powerful deck that just never ends up getting like the accolades i think that it deserves uh but yeah just kind of going through these i mean you start to see kind of this trend like we have like these were prison decks you have more humans decks you have is it phoenix so like this uh while not necessarily a win for phoenix because it only put one copy in the top eight and it ended up finishing in the quarterfinals uh, is it Phoenix definitely from here became a huge player in the meta game and it ended up being like a deck that people had to beat um, some uh, notable cards. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to say that like a million times throughout it, but faithless looting was still legal in the format. And uh, even though ancient stirrings, one of the most played cards, you know, just in the fact that we have so many Tron decks and, you know, some of these uh, other, like not necessarily affinity, like the scales decks and things like that. Now we're playing Ancient Stirrings, like Faithless Looting slowly started to creep up, and then like everybody started playing Faithless Looting after this. Uh, so I mean, just the fact that you had this like powerful one mana cantrip, and then is it Phoenix? You just got to discard, you know, like your Arclight Phoenixes and things like that, that you essentially got them back like super early, where like you could like ditch two phoenixes like ideally you could do this like on turn two where like you fade the suiting ditch two phoenixes whatever play like a manamorphose and then like thought scour uh like lightning bolt or like gut shot lightning bolt uh lightning axe something um even like one of these other one mana cantrips and then just kind of go off like bring these back put huge amounts of pressure on your opponent and it was kind of uh good against humans because you had thing in the ice where, like, you could just play this, and if your opponent didn't bounce it, or if you just had enough reactive spells, like, if they went to go bounce it with their Reflector Mage, you could just flip it and kind of just reset their board, and just being a little bit harder for them to rebuild if they didn't have Aether Vial. Uh, also, just, again, being, like, super annoying for them to deal with, because you kind of just uh, stop all of their development, and they're stuck trying to reconfigure for the next few turns, and from there, like, you could just get Phoenixes going and attack, or just play a big Crackling Drake and kill your opponent in one shot. So, yeah, that that's the, the top eight, some of the notable decks from the format, and kind of, like, as we went on from this, I mean, humans continue to be a very powerful deck in the format. People really didn't necessarily play affinity tron even nowadays like always just finds a way to hang around and i think this is probably one of the best times to play tron is because it's still getting to seven mana and playing a karn liberated at that time was still very powerful and i mean as you can see uh we're used to like the like the karn you know packages and everything where we go and just play uh different cards from our sideboard uh there is no uh karn the great creator in sight in this deck you have uh, Karn Liberated, you have Ugin, you have Ulamogs, Worm Coils, Walking Ballistas in your main deck, and you actually sideboarded with this deck, which is a pretty neat thing to look back on, considering that, you know, we're four years, uh, four and a half years roughly removed from this event, and, you know, Tron is like the same, but quietly different as well with uh, Karn. And of course, we saw decks eventually go into Karn the Great Creator and play Michaelson's Lattice to try to lock out your opponent from really playing any meaningful games of Magic uh, to that point. Uh, and yeah, that is a Mythic Championship to London. Some of the things that kind of changed from Modern and like this being a pretty... I would think like a landmark mythic championship because again like we had the loss of like one of the you know one of the best players historically that on the pro tour that ended up being out as like a cheater bringing into question like their integrity uh, of the game and like how many of their results are actually based on uh, good results and you know not 
uh, marking cards or anything like that. Uh, a player getting to take advantage of that in Matt Sperling, who went from ninth place to runner-up at the Pro Tour. Eli Loveman being able to become this like really really good player and kind of like tearing it up in like the MPL and everything as you know as things went forward humans flexing that it had the power to still be one of the top decks in the format while a new monster was kind of brewing in the wings of like is it phoenix and showing it in its results and uh the modern metagame still overall being just this diverse place where you know, you could play just about any deck that you want and make it in the case of uh, Theon Nguyen, who ended up bringing Titan Shift and, you know, making a good run at making top eight. I mean, just overall putting on a great tournament, showing that a really good player picking up a deck can just win with just about everything uh, in this format. On top of that, seeing decks like Burn, Jund, Ad Nauseum white blue control hardened scales more tron amulet titan and all these other like eight and two and seven and three decks that you know i just proven that like on any given day like in this time of modern history and i think even now you know you have a diverse pool of decks that can do very well in the tournament and while like the top eight isn't necessarily like that diverse i mean you have like three you know five or two different decks between five players uh and you have like three oddballs honestly here uh in terms of you know what actually did well my i guess minus like is it phoenix so like two oddball decks a deck that is slowly then becomes like the best deck in the format and a deck that is currently on top with a deck that foils it you know so definitely interesting to look back on like this pro tour and to think everything that happened and kind of like what modern became after the fact uh, and in the next video, we're going to be looking at Mythic Championship 4, which does a complete 180, and uh, it ends up becoming something known as uh, Hogak Summer, and just some crazy stories of, you know, people playing the deck leading up to the Pro Tour, and, you know, after the fact, where obviously, if you've been keeping track of Modern or, you know, anything about Modern Horizons, Hogak was swiftly banned after its most busted iteration. Even when it was technically nerfed with bannings, uh, it was still one of the most brought decks to the Pro Tour at that time or to the Mythic Championship 4. So I look forward to going over that. And if you want to go over there and watch it with me or watch me talk about like the format and everything, of course, leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you know when that video gets posted. And of course, follow the links down in the description below if you want to check out any of the stuff from Mythic Champion ship too or any of my social media stuff so that's gonna do it for me i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope to see you all in the next one